I'm sorry I talk so much guys I just really want to be thorough like I just want to help other people like I've been helped and just give advice hi guys okay so this video I am sitting at my desk again which most of my videos have been and I promised like the next few videos will not be me sitting at this desk and two i'm making another navly video and this is probably going to be my last navly video because i've made a few others but i feel like i'm exhausting my <laughs> navly knowledge but i did get some recent questions and so i want to address these directly especially now that i've completed my clinical year um two navly seasons have gone by and people have told me some things based off of my recommendations. So I feel like this is a more authentic than when I had just freshly taken it. To give you a little bit of background about myself, if you're new to this channel, my name's Brittany. I am a recent graduate of St. George's University. Like I literally finished vet school like three <laughs> weeks ago. Um, and as I'm recording this video, it is the third day of February and I took my NAVLI last April. So it's been almost a year since I've taken my NAVLI. Um, and for those of you who don't know that might not be a vet student or might not be in the veterinary world, the NAVLI is the North American Veterinary License Exam. So you have to take that exam to be able to legally practice in the United States and Canada. Um, and so typically you take it during your fourth year of veterinary school. Um, I think it's like logistically you have to be like within 10 months of graduation. Um, so the traditional window that most people take the NAVLI is in November. Um, and that's because the traditional vet school um, usually starts clinic sometime between February and May of your third year. And then you continue into it that summer of your fourth year, you take the test in November. Now there is an April window in case for some reason you fail that November window, you can retake it before you graduate. But also for people like me that went to school in the Caribbean and started in a January class, the April window is our first window. So that's why I took it in April because I wanted to take it my first window. And so I passed. And so now I'm giving advice. So these are questions that I polled on my Instagram. And as I always tell you guys, and for people that are new, I am a basic average girl making a YouTube for a hobby. So I am not recording this on a fancy camera. It is on my phone. And so I cannot use my phone to look at the questions that people ask. So I have sticky notes. So, um, so the first question that I got asked is how early did you start prepping for the NAVLI? So I always preface again, and I explain my situation that I took it in April because if most the average person starts clinics i want to say like on a grand scheme in may is june and then you're prepping until november so the average vet student will have about five to six months to prep there are some vet schools that start clinics before that and there are people like me that are taking the that started clinics in january and took it in april so i only had three months to prepare for navli so i just want to throw that out there so for me when i ended my last semester in december I gave myself about a week or two off and I started slowly started studying at the time again personally I was also getting ready to take my acupuncture certification exam so right after I finished my last preclinical semester I was like really focused on that but as soon as that ended I used the NAVLI vet prep recommendation which I'm going to go into that later so I would say the average person starts prepping for it as soon as they start clinics but I will say most vet students start hardcore prepping about six to eight weeks before the NAVLI actually occurs. Cause that's when like you're scared. That's when everything like really is like, man, I gotta get my crap together. But I would say like, initially I started preparing as soon as clinic started. And so that leads into the next question of how did you study for the NAVLI? And I'm just looking because a lot of these questions are different or similar, not different. Um, so what I did for the NAVLI and I'll piggyback some of these questions. What I did for the NAVLI was I followed the vet prep guide. So vet prep is one of the two main programs that veterinary students use for the NAVLI. There's vet prep and Zuku where I went at SGU, they gave us free access to vet prep. Some vet schools will give you free access to vet prep and or Zuku. Some schools let you choose. Some schools have it set for you like SGU and some schools don't pay for it at all, but I got it for free. Um, so I just used the vet prep recommendations of the study schedule and everything like that. But on top of that, and this kind of goes into what did you use for the NAVLI prep? I used vet prep, but I also used my own personal notes when there were things that I didn't know. I like went or like 
I couldn't remember. I went back and I reviewed notes. I mean, going through school, and I mean, this is for vet school, this is medical school, this is undergrad, high school even, like if you're watching this, no matter where you go through school, you're never gonna remember everything. Like there's gonna be some classes, there's gonna be some subjects that you just got by and you like really don't remember it. So I know that there were certain subjects that I, when I got ready to take my boards, I was gonna have to review. So when I got to those subjects, I like just went back. Sometimes if I felt that SU didn't do a good job teaching us that, I would look up Merck's manual. I would look up VCA hospitals has like an excellent like online library and it's really made for clients, but it's like a crash course of things. So like I would look on Venn if it was just something I personally wanted to understand, but I'm also like a very studious and inquisitive person. So sometimes like for my own knowledge, I wanted to know more. Um, and then the last other thing that I used was the ICVA exams, which I can go into that in a little bit, but ICVA is basically the board that creates the NAVLI exam. I tell everyone, and this is how it was explain, explained to me, is that vet prep and Zuku are programs designed by people who have very closely studied the NAVLI and what is asked and how it's asked. And then they create this program that is supposed to guarantee that you pass, but they don't make the exams. ICVA makes the exams and they have three practice NAVLI exams or three half practice NAVLIs where they're required they're retired questions. And so I use that because I was like, this is how the questions are gonna be asked and this is from the board that is creating it. So I'll talk about that in a second. So that goes on and I wanna, I'm doing this question next because I don't want people to run with what I said. And that was, did you use SGU, SGU's notes in PowerPoints or other online resources? So that's part one of this question. So yes, like I said, I used my notes from school and I, I wanna preface this and say a lot of people ask me that as they're approaching clinical years. Some people even ask me that before they start vet school. And like the NAVLI isn't an exam that they're going to be asking you stuff that you haven't already learned. Like the NAVLI is basic science things. It is your medicine, it's farm, it's diagnostic imaging, it's can you read blood work. It's not going to be like some ambiguous case. Like that's the thing. This test is something that can be asked and standardized. And so that's why sometimes people even argue and say, oh, what the NAVLI asks is not really how it's seen in practice, but they have to choose these standardized cases in these standardized situations. And so part of it, the way I look at it, is that there's only so much they can ask you. And for me personally, I started seeing patterns in vet prep and the ICVA and just things like that. And I was just like, okay, so if they present to me a horse that has unilateral lameness, it's going to be the equine protozoal myo, myoencephalopathy like there, you just start to see patterns and like how they ask questions I'm not saying get cocky with it but I'm just saying like you have to learn to work the test some people really don't like standardized test taking I've never really been an issue with test standardized or not the NAVLI was probably the most stressed I've ever been taking a test because it was the biggest test of my life and my whole career depended on it and it is a very expensive test and I did not want to have to retake that or the stress of studying it again so I had a little bit more anxiety for this but like it's a doable test and so the second part of that question was someone asked all honest review do you think SGU prepared you well and I want to say yes flat out yes there was not a lot where I was just like, oh my God, I just never learned this. Like, oh my God, like how, how am I gonna pass? Like, it was not like that by any means. And like, people like to diss the island school. So I really wanted to follow up on that and say like, I 100% felt prepared. And no matter where you go, there's going to be something that your vet school lacks on. So um, I felt prepared. Again, there were subjects that either me personally, I didn't do well on, or that was just like one of the downfalls. Like I was terrified that I was gonna get an eye question because I personally feel like we weren't taught eyes very well and so I was just like oh my god so I went back and I reviewed eyes and I made a whole little note of just eyes and now I feel great about eyes and I understand a lot that I didn't really understand before but for another example we had an excellent parasitology teacher and parasitology just said, Woof. like it flew right over my head when we were learning it and so when Napoli came parasitology is a basic core study in vet school I was like I need to know like I cannot miss questions because I don't know my parasites like I knew my basic round worms and hook worms I knew my basic like ear mites but I was like if they ask certain things that are very specific I didn't want to miss easy points so it comes down to like knowing your own weaknesses and what you need to work on and then using vet prep or zuku as like a guide of what you need to review someone asked NAVLI study schedule. So again, I, not ICVA, vet prep gives out a study schedule 
And that was what I used initially in like the vet prep study guide. It like, it's like, do this, how many questions? Do this, how many practice tests? Do this, how many like vet prep has these like study review sheets and review PowerPoints. And it tells you what to do and what species. And that was how I started at first. But there were times where I'm like, okay, like I'm getting all these like dog questions right, but like I really need to review my pig stuff. So like closer to the exam, I kind of started laxing on that because I was just like, okay, like this is great. And I, I like that you guys are dividing it up, but I also need to make sure I study what I need to study. And um, when it was close to the exam, I just started doing as many practice questions as I could. Like it got down to the point where on vet prep, it had these review sheets and these review PowerPoints. And I tell everyone, I did not get through all the questions on vet prep. Like everyone tries to finish vet prep and vet prep does has a guarantee that if you complete it in its entirety and you fail the NAVLI, they will repay for it if you fail to take it again because they stand by their program. But you have to, I think, either complete it in full or like get very close to like being done. I didn't, but I did get done with all of the prep pages and all of the pay, like prep videos. And those were very helpful. That's what helped me identify patterns because it was like the things they emphasized and bolded and then the things that were on the practice questions and then on ICVA, it was like all coming together. So I tell everyone, even if you can't get through the questions, get through the power pages and the power lectures. Also that I noticed is that on vet prep, the practice questions are the same questions they use for their practice test. It's just for the practice test, it's timed and you can't see the answer. Like normally when you do the practice questions, it gives you like a response as soon as you click it. So I realized that and I got to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time, like always having to do a test and it's timed and I might not be able to. And so I got to the point where I just did as many practice questions as I could. Like in the last two weeks, even when I was in rotations, if I had free time, iPad, my phone, because I had it on my phone too. And I would just get through the practice questions. And again, the closer you get, you don't have time to sit and like do notes and everything. So the closer I got, I just practice, 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 practice questions. And then the last question I have on here is what was your overall Navli experience? And I tell everyone it was horrible. Like, and I like, I feel like a lot of people in the vet world are dramatic. But this was a very stressful exam and like some people like whine and cry about every minor inconvenience but like this was an exam where i was just like i cannot take this exam again and it's funny because someone told me if you walk out feeling like you did great you probably failed if you walk out feeling like you failed or you just don't know you probably did okay and when i walked out of that exam i was just like i had never felt so like I didn't even know I just felt horrible and I remember I called my dad as soon as I got in the car and he was like you don't sound happy and I was like I'm not and he was just like well you're done with it now he was like so take yourself out to eat and enjoy your day and I was just like okay and like for the first day like two to three days I just kind of moped because I just really didn't know how I felt and I was just like if I felt this exam I'm going to have to go through not only just taking it again or paying for it, the stress of the study, like the last four weeks was so high stress. And so finally, after about three or four days, I was like, okay, well, we can't mope until the scores come out because the scores don't come out for six to eight weeks. And I was like, we are not about to do this. So finally, I just kind of had to let it go. And the only thing that would like re like bring it up was when people were like, oh my God, how'd your test go? Did you get the scores? And I was like, no, and I don't want to think about it. And then I got the score and I passed, so. Giving into peer pressure and checking my scores at work on the first day of my new rotation. Oh my god, I look so weak. really good too okay so the last thing that i wanted to share on this video and i'm going to try to stop talking so much and hurry up is the icva so the icva 
um, at least at SGU, they pay, there's three different practice tests and SGU paid for us to do one at the end of our term six, which is our last preclinical year, because they just wanted to see like where we were after our basic sciences. It didn't matter if it said we were passing or not, they just wanted to see. And it was a part of our grade to like do that within our, our professionalism class, I think. And so I got my score and it was like in the middle of like, you might pass, you might fail. And I was like, okay. So then I retook another practice test um, in about February. So again, I started clinics in January. I took one in February. I got almost the exact same score, which was kind of concerning because I had been going through vet prep and re reviewing and stuff. And I was like, why hasn't my score changed? So then the third one I saved to do like a week and a half before my NABLE because I was like, this is going to be what really shows me what I do. And when I took that one, the whole curve like of average of what your score might be was above passing and so I was like okay we got to keep this energy up and I passed so it's doable and I really like the ICVA exams and that's not something that a lot of vet schools tell people and this is just from me telling people that and people not knowing that that's out there I recommend doing it even if you don't do all three when I took them there were two that were 55 and you didn't get the answers. And there was one that was 65 and you did get the answers. It didn't give an explanation, but it, you at least got to see what you did right and wrong. So I highly recommend doing that. Okay, I'm done. I promise I'm done. So like I said, if you saw my last video that I posted where I did a Q&A on my clinical year, I said that I will soon be doing like a rebranding of my page. And so I will be doing that and working on it. I actually think my next video will be a gym video, which I've never really posted on my YouTube. So I'm pretty sure like no one's gonna look at it because I don't have people watching me for my fitness life. But I want my page to be more than just vet school and my vet life. I want it to just be about me. And if that happens to be helping people vet in the vet world, that is. But I also want to showcase other things in my life. Um, and I have like a whole list of videos that I want to do for YouTube. I just need to do it. Like coincidentally, I haven't started working yet and I'm still about six and a half weeks before working, but I have been so busy. Like I feel like because I've been gone all of my clinical year, like everyone wants to see me, everyone wants to do something. And I just want to like, I'm happy to see everyone, but I also want to just sit at home and do what I want to do, like scrapbooking and making YouTubes and just sitting at my desk and enjoying the day or not even sitting at the desk, going outside and enjoying the day. But just like after this, I have a Zoom call. I'm going to meet someone for lunch, but I don't know. I'm not complaining because I do enjoy it. But yeah, I will be making videos as soon as I can. So I hope this helps somebody and be sure to follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok. I try to respond to everyone in my DMs to the best of my knowledge. If it is something I know, I will never lie to you and I will tell you I don't know. Um, but yeah, and so until next time.